Hello everybody and welcome back to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be showcasing the brand new Gigabyte P35K version 3 CF4. The timeline for our detailed review is going to start off with a full unboxing of the unit to show you what you can expect inside of your box when you order a new laptop. And then we'll move into displaying the unit itself, highlighting all the features and great things about the laptop. And then we'll move into benchmarking and we'll finalize everything with a minor disassembly. So to start us off with our unboxing, you see we have a black gigabyte box with the orange text. Inside we have a smaller box that contains our product manuals and driver's disc, as well as a plastic optical drive bay. This is used to swap out the optical drive with a mechanical hard drive or SSD. In the front portion, we have a smaller box here that contains the laptop's AC to DC power adapter. And then finally we have the laptop itself which is surrounded by foam on all sides to prevent it from having any kind of movement or shock damage. And then a protective sleeve to prevent against any kind of scratching. With our first glance at the P35 at hand you can see that it is a thin profile 15 inch gaming laptop. Alright now with the P35 set aside we can go ahead and open it up and power it on for the first time. You'll see that between the keyboard and the screen, you do have an oversized microfiber cloth that you can hold on to to keep the laptop clean from any dust and debris. And we're running off of battery power right now. We'll just go ahead and jump straight into the BIOS. This will give you an idea of what our current BIOS version is during all of our benchmarks and just give you an overview of the options you have available inside of the BIOS. Now we have our P35K plugged into mains power and we're going to go ahead and power on and see how long it takes in real life to get inside of the Windows environment. We're booting into Windows 8.1 and we're running on two solid state disks in a RAID 0 array so as you can see the real life boot time is actually very quick. Now we'll zoom in and take a look at the front of the laptop and we'll show you here that normally in addition to just the status LEDs of most laptops, this is where you're going to find your optical drive bay. We did point out earlier in the unboxing that this optical drive bay can be swapped out to add another hard disk. The palm rest area is a matte type and large enough to easily fit your hands on there. We have stickers on the left and right hand sides, these product badges to display the hardware inside of the unit. And then up above, we'll look at the chiclet style keyboard. We have the embedded arrow keys, and we see that the WSAD keys are highlighted to be slightly different than the rest to point out this is a gaming focused laptop. As we zoom in on the P35 sticker itself, you can see our current statistics as far as CPU, memory, storage, optical disk drive, and operating system. Gigabyte's two year warranty sticker down below. On our right hand side we have the NVIDIA Optimus technology, the NVIDIA GeForce for the dedicated GPU, and our Intel CPU badge. Now jumping straight to the top of the screen we're going to look at our dedicated microphone input and webcam on the top of the display. And the display itself as we swing around you can see is a matte type display not showing any reflections. Now continuing on with the interfaces we'll move to the right hand side of the laptop where we'll find mini display port two USB 3.0 ports, HDMI output, VGA, and then we see the AC-DC power port there for charging the laptop and running off of mains power. Onto the rear of the laptop, we actually have no interfaces here, just the left and right cooling vents for the exhaust of the system. And to our left hand side, we're going to start with our Kinningston lock port, the RJ45 port for local networking, two USB 2.0 ports, our 3.5 millimeter connections for the headphones, microphone, and an SD card reader. 
And before we leave the interface portion of our review, this is a good time to mention that the screen itself, while being a matte type display and normal 15 inch size, has a full 3K resolution of 2,880 pixels by 1,620. So this is a 3K screen, which is a much higher resolution than your standard 1080p. Now we're gonna go ahead and move into measuring out the P35K. As we said in the beginning, it's a thin profile gaming laptop, and many laptops these days are focusing not just on how powerful they are, but how easily they can be carried around and fit into a bag. The P35K does manage to keep a very low profile with under an inch on the front and back sides. So up next, we have the other half of the equation as far as thin and light gaming laptop, and that would be the weight portion. As you can see, the laptop itself is five pounds and eight ounces, and that's including the battery. When we throw in the power adapter as well, we're up to seven pounds and five ounces. That's a fairly light total carry weight and shouldn't present too much of an issue for most people to carry around most of the day. Now we're moving out of the outside and into the inside of the computer by taking a look at the system device manager. And here's a great detailed look at all the system hardware. We see our multiple display adapters are integrated from Intel and dedicated from NVIDIA. We also see our Core i7-4710 CPU provided by Intel. Also for those interested, here is the monitor's ID for the monitor panel used. And here is the current resolution we're using. The next big part of our review is moving on to our benchmarks. And here we're starting with 3D Mark 11. And we have a performance score of 11,018 using the hardware that we showed from before in the device manager. During the time that we ran 3D Mark 11, we monitored all the CPU temperatures. And you can see here that our CPU got up to about 90 degrees Celsius, while our video card up to about 82 degrees Celsius. These are fairly normal ranges for a gaming laptop in the 15-inch chassis. And down below, we have our GPU-Z information on our NVIDIA GTX 980 Mobile. Now moving right along to the next part of our review, we're doing the sound levels test using a sound meter and running some benchmarks on our laptop. You can see that in the keyboard area, we're running some gaming benchmarks. We're about 30, 40, up to about 55 decibels of sound. Now if we move the meter over to the rear of the laptop to the exhaust directly, we can see those levels go up to about 65. Now to check for consistency, we move the meter over to the other side of the laptop and the exhaust over here is producing more or less around the same reading of 65 decibels. So both of the cooling system fans are making about the same amount of noise. Also one thing, just as a friendly reminder, our sound levels test is a worst case situation where we're running a high end gaming benchmark and placing our sound meter right next to the loudest noises. If you were to have this laptop in a normal environment, the ambient noises would cover most of the cooling noise, and then you would not have your ear right next to the exhaust. So these are great benchmarks for comparing against our other systems we reviewed, and not so much for comparing directly to what you expect in real life environments. Now that Firestrike has concluded, we can take a look at our performance score, and we have a score of 8,302. This is a pretty demanding benchmark, so we can take a look at the temperatures this time and see if they've changed. And as we can see, the CPU is still about 90 degrees Celsius and our GPU about 82 degrees Celsius. So it shows the cooling is pretty consistent no matter how much more load we place on it than before. Of course, one of the great things about Firestrike is the full onslaught of graphs and details you get from the benchmark itself. So it's a great way to analyze your system's performance. And we just want to show the sound levels one more time. Now that the laptop is not under load and it's at an idle state, you can see the sound pressure level has gone down dramatically.
Next up is going to be a volume check, and now we're using the sound meter to measure just how loud the speakers can get. And right now you can see they're fairly loud, so the sound system does produce quite a bit of volume when needed. And so now it's time for us to move into the final segment of our review, and that's going to be the minor disassembly of the P35K. As you can see, we do have a user accessible bay door in the center that will help you get to the system RAM. Over below, we're going to look at the switch. This is what you can use to unlock the optical drive bay. As we showed in the unboxing, you do have a bracket that was included, and then from that bracket, you can install any 2.5 inch disc you want. So it can be a third solid state disk, or you can install a mechanical hard drive for more storage space. If you are going to need full system access, you'll see there's a lot of screws to remove and they are different sizes. So be sure to keep really good track of what screws you removed and where they go so you can place them back in the same order that you took them out. Now we can go ahead and get a first view of the inside of the laptop itself. Be careful, we do have a wire here connecting the bottom half. So starting off on the right hand side, we have the two and a half inch mechanical hard drive. This is a one terabyte hard drive. Of course, we already saw our optical drive bay. And to the left of that, we have the system's internal battery. Next up above that, we see our two solid state disks. And these are, again were configured in a RAID 0 setup. We're looking at one of our wireless cards responsible for the wireless connectivity and Bluetooth. And in the center, we have the system RAM. You'll notice there are only two system RAM slots with 8 gigabyte sticks, giving you a 16 gigabyte configuration. This is the actual max configuration for this laptop. And the last thing for the disassembly, we just wanted to quickly show you what it looks like to replace the optical drive with your own 2.5 inch disc using the included adapter. And that, everybody, actually is going to go ahead and bring our full review of the P35K to a close. If you found that you're interested in this laptop and you'd like to learn more about it or check out the current pricing and availability, then just hop over to our website, gentechpc.com, and there we have all of that information and more. If you feel that you have a few questions we weren't able to manage to answer in the review, then feel free to ask those down below in the video comments. That way we can answer your question and also answer for everybody else. Other than that, if you need more personalized help, then feel free to contact us by phone or email, and we'll always be happy to help you out. So we just want to remind you that once again, this was Gentech PC, and we'll see you next time.